Welcome ladies and gents to this next video. In this video series, we're building an e-commerce website. I'm basing mine on selling hair or hair extensions, uh, but you can use this e-commerce website for any type of product you want to sell online. First thing I want to do is just thank you guys for taking your time out of your day to watch this video, as well as watching this video series. It really means a lot to me and I do appreciate the time you have to take out even if you're following along to build the website it takes time and I do appreciate your time so thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching these videos so the next thing if you found this video through search or on the recommended items what I would suggest is clicking on this playlist that's going to pop up now or I'll link the playlist in the description and then just follow the entire playlist from the first video through that way you'll follow along much more easier then you will need a page builder called Divi as well as some hosting and a domain name if you want to follow along and build your e-commerce website and for the page builder we will be using Divi and I have a link to elegant themes in the description below so you can buy Divi and also I have links to a company called Green Geeks who will give you hosting as well as a domain name and then just to be upfront with you that if you do purchase the V or the domain name or web hosting, I do receive a commission. It doesn't cost you guys anything extra. It just helps me for recommending their product. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you if you do purchase through my links. It does mean a lot to me and it helps me and my channel out. In this video, we'll be building out the header, which is at the top of the website. And then we'll also be building out the footer, which is at the bottom of the website. So now that the introduction's out the way, let's jump into my laptop. The first thing we're going to do is build out this header section. So what you'll need is your logo, and then the rest of this will be done in the Divi theme builder. So if I go to the back end of my WordPress dashboard, you'll see I have now loaded all my products. I only have 12. You might have much more than me, or you might only have one product, and that's absolutely fine. The first thing we want to do, let's come over here to our navigation menu, and let's hover over Divi, and let's click on this option, Theme Builder. We'll then get to a page like this, and we want to click on this option to add a global header, meaning that this header will be on every page of our website. Then get the option to build a global header or add from library. We're gonna go with the option to build the global header. So if we just come and look at our built header, first thing we need to do, we need to give this background a color and I'm using a, like a light blue. You guys can use the same color as me or you can go with your brand colors. So if I come back to Theme Builder, first thing we want to do, we want to hover over this, we'll get our section settings, which is the blue box. So that you'll see the blue box covers the whole width of the page. So let's click on the settings by clicking this gear icon. And what we can do, if you've never used Divi before, you can drag this around, so wherever you want to drag it, or you can lock it to the left like that. And I just did that by clicking this icon over here. To change the color of this background, we need to click on the background settings. And yeah, we have a few options. You can change it to a background color. You can use a background gradient. So let me give you an example of that. So that's what a background gradient looks like. But we don't want that, so I'm just going to delete that. You can also put in a background image, a background video, a background pattern, or a background mask. But Ours is just a standard light blue background. So all I'm going to do is come to the first option, which is background color, and I'm going to choose my blue color. And if you want to use the same color, here is the hex code. So guys, just pause if you want to use the same colors as I am and just copy those colors down. Now that we have our blue background, the next thing we need is our logo as well as our menu links. So we come back to the theme builder. We can click this check mark here with a green background to save the changes of our section settings. And then we want to add a row. And we do that by clicking the green button. And this will insert a row. 
Now, when you get the option to insert a row, we have a few options here, and this is how many columns you want in your row. So you can have one column, two equal columns, three equal columns, four equal columns, five and six equal columns, and so on. And then there's various widths of the columns that you can choose over here. So we only need one column for this. So let's select that option. And then we get prompted to insert a module. And Divi comes with a few options in terms of modules. What we're looking for is the menu module. So let's type in menu and we get this option for the menu module. We can click that option. And you'll see it inserts our menus. Now, this is not the menu that we created in the very first video. So this, I think, is just a bit of a glitch on Divi's end. All you need to do is where it's open. So all you need to do under content, just click on this drop down where it says primary menu or whatever you named your menu. Yours might be main menu or whatever you named it. And just click the option to select a menu. Then you see it loads our actual menu that we want. And you can just come back here and just, again, just choose primary menu. And you'll see now, there's our menu that we created in the first video. The next thing we want to do, we want to come down to logo and click on that. And then, yeah, we can add our logo image. So let's click on this button to add an image. And I am just going to drag the logo from my other screen over here. And once it's uploaded, we can click this button to upload an image. And there is our logo. Now it doesn't look like this yet, but we'll get there. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to come down to elements and click on that. And over here, it says show shopping cart icon. We want to select yes. And there is our shopping cart icon. And for show search icon, we want to select yes. And there's our search icon. So you can see that is the cart over here and the search icon over there. The next thing we want to do, if we come over to link, we want to come to the logo link URL. And normally when you have a logo, you make that logo link to your home page. So let's do that. Let's come over to logo link URL. Let's just hover over the field here and we get this icon. Let's click on that. And this is for dynamic content. And what we can do, we can just select this option for home page link. And then the logo link target, you can open it in the same window or in a new tab. I just leave it in the same window. We're not going to worry about module link URL or, or the module link target. Let's come down to background. And as you can see, there's a white background there. And if I hover over here, you'll see, well, let me click this gear icon. You'll see that the color, I know this color is white. And that's why you have this white background. So what we want to do, we actually want to make this, or we can actually, let's just, sorry, save that. Let's just delete it. And you'll see the white background disappears. All right, and then admin label, I'm not really going to use this, but yeah, you can name your different modules. Uh, so you maybe remember what they are, but I, I only use this on very big sites. And so you can use it, but I'm not going to use it in this tutorial. The next thing we need to do, let's go to the design tab and let's come to layout. So now if you notice on here, everything is in the center. So to do that, you need to come to style and click centered. You'll see our logo goes on top and in the center. And then our menu items are at the bottom of our logo. So drop down menu direction. We don't have any drop down menus, but if you do have, you can select if they open downwards, meaning down this way or upwards, meaning up that way. So let's come over to menu text and there's a few things I want to change here. So the active link color, meaning when someone selects a page and they land on that page, let's say, for instance, we select the sale page, that means they will land on the sale page and that will be the active link. So what color do you want that to be? I'm going to choose my dark blue color and I'll just open this so you can see the hex code in case you want to copy it. The menu fonts I'm going to leave as default. The menu font weight, I'm going to make this semi bold. Then the menu font style, I'm going to make it all uppercase, and I do that by selecting this option over here. And then for menu text color, I am going to make it this blue. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to click in there because I want it to be a bit 
fainter. And I'm going to use the opacity slider here, and I'm going to drop it to about 50%. Like that. And you'll see it's a bit fainter now, so it blends in with the background a bit, but you can still see the text. So copy this RGBA code if you want to use the same color as me, or just take this color and drop the opacity slider. The next thing I want to do, I want to set a hover on these menu items so that when someone hovers over it, it changes. And I'm going to actually set it to the dark blue. So when it hovers, it becomes that dark blue and not the lighter color. So to do that, we need to come to the menu text color. And if you hover over it, you get a few options here. We want to select this cursor option. And it gives us our normal state. Yeah, they call it desktop, but it's actually the normal state. And here is the hover state. So let's click on hover state. And let's change it to the dark blue. And you'll see they all change there. But I'll show you when we've done with the page how it works. So I'm going to go back to the normal state. And if we scroll down a bit here, for menu text size, I'm going to make this 18 pixels. And I'm not going to adjust it on on other screen sizes. So if you see if we hover over menu text size, we get this mobile option. And if I click on it, we have a desktop view, a tablet view, and a phone view. And you can actually change the text size for each of you. But I'm going to leave it as 18 pixels on all views. Then everything else in here, I'm going to leave. You're more than welcome to play around with letter spacing. Let me just show you what that does. If I do like five pixels, you'll see it actually gives quite a bit of spacing. But I don't want that, so I'm going to take that out. And then the menu line height just controls the height of the text. And then the text color, I'm going to leave. And I'm also not going to do anything with text shadow. But let's come down to drop down menu. And there's a lot of options here, but we don't have any drop down menus. Well, I don't in my case. If you have drop down menus, feel free to play around with all these settings. But there is one setting we're going to need to change. And I just want to quickly click on these three dots. And I just want to put it on the tablet view for now. So if I click on the drop down here, you'll see there's this blue line that is on top of the menu. So I just want to change that color to my dark blue. And we do that by coming over to drop down menu line color. And if I change that to the dark blue, you'll see it's changed now to the dark blue. Then the other thing we want to change here for our smaller screen sizes is the mobile menu background color. Now I'm going to be using my light color. So I'm going to change it to that. And again, there's the hex code on top there if you want to use it. And let's scroll down because that's all we're going to do under the drop down menu section. Let's come down to icons and open that. So I think let's just quickly go back to desktop view so we can sit in that view. So what we want to do, we want to set these two icons as the same colors as our menu links. So I'm going to choose for shopping cart color, I'm going to choose my dark blue, come into the color and then just drop the opacity down to 50% again. Just like that. And then we can click on the hover state again and come over to the hover state and then just make it the dark blue. Go back to the normal state. For the search icon, we can do the same. We can choose our dark color. Come into it and just drop the opacity slider to 50% again. And then click on the hover option. Come to the hover state and make it the dark blue. Then let's go back to the tablet view. And this is just so the hamburger menu comes up and we can see it. Let's choose the dark blue. And yeah, I'm not dropping the opacity. I'm just leaving it the dark blue and there's no hover state for it or anything like that. And let's come to the shopping cart icons font size. And I'm going to make this the same as the text size, which is 18 pixels, as well as the search icon font size. I'm going to make 18 pixels as well. The hamburger menu icon font size, I'm going to leave at default, which is 32 pixels. So that's all for the icon section. Let's just scroll down a bit. And the last thing we're really going to do here is we're going to come down to sizing. Click on that. And I just want to give my logo a max width. And the reason is because if I, like on tablet, it looks fine. But if I come to the mobile or phone view, it's 
just a, a tad too big. So I just want to give it a max width of 60%. And you'll see it brings the size down a bit, which looks better. And guys, you'll have to play around with this. Don't use 60% if it doesn't look good. Play around with the percentage and see what looks good on a phone for you. And that's it. So that's what it'll look like on phone. And on desktop, it will look like that, which looks like this. One thing, sorry, I've just noticed, you can see the spacing. This is more narrower and on here it's quite large. And the reason it's like that is we just need to go into our section settings. If I, I just want to show you. So you'll see if I hover over it, you'll see there's some, there's a blue color that comes up here and that's what we call padding. So let's just make that padding zero. So let's come into the section settings. Let's come to design. Let's come to the spacing option. And under padding, yeah, let's click this chain link. And let's put zero for top. And then we'll do the same for bottom. And you'll see it makes it much more narrower. And there we are done with our header. So we can save that. And then let's exit the header layout by clicking the cross here. Or the X, I should say. And guys, just remember this. So when you make a change like this, you'll see there's another place you need to save your changes. And that's this button over here. So let's click Save Changes. And then I'm just going to come over here to Visit Site. So if you hover over your site name, you can come to Visit Site. I'm going to just open this in a new tab so we can see what our header looks like. And there's our header, which looks exactly like the first store I created. And just to show you that hover effect, so if I hover, you'll see it changes to the darker blue. And you'll see this is the home is the active page, so that stays the darker blue. If we went to the sale page, that now is the darker blue. So that's why we use those hover effects. So the next thing we want to do, if I scroll down to the bottom here, we now need to create this footer. So let's go back to the back end of our website. And in the same block here, we want to add a global footer. So let's select that option. And we want to select this option to build global footer. So let's just go have a look at what our global footer looks like. So we have this dark blue background. So let's start with that. Let's come back to the theme builder. Let's hover over it and we get our section again. So let's go to the section settings. And let me just lock that to the left again. And let's click on the background option and let's change this to our dark blue. Let's save it by clicking the check mark here. And then you'll see we have three columns. So let's go back to the theme builder and let's add our row. So let's click the green button and now we need the three column row. So let's select that option. Now, if we look at what module we have to insert for the first column here, we, so we've got these headings over here and then we have some text and then yeah, we have a form. So let's start with the heading first. So let's go to the theme builder. Let's choose a text module. So we type in text and the text module will come up and we can choose that option. And let's change our text and it was get a 10% discount. And guys, again, this is all dummy text from my part. You can use any text you feel is relevant to your website in this footer. And they're gonna highlight the entire text and I'm gonna come up to your where it says paragraph and click on the drop down. And I'm gonna change this to a heading four. The next thing we need to do, we need to go to the design tab. So let's click on that and what we can actually do is if we hover over the text we've got here, this edit button comes up in, or it's like a paintbrush. I'm not sure what it is, but I call it the edit button. If you click on that, it will take you exactly to the heading for text. And now we can change it. So if we look here, the text is white. So let's change it to white. And guys, there's a hex code if you need it for white. You'll also notice that it sits in the center of the column. So let's change that over here where it's heading for text alignment. Let's put that in the center. 
And then I actually want to make it a bit bold. So let's come to heading for font weight and let's change it to semi bold. So I should have actually, um, <laughs> got in the order, uh, but I'm all over the place here. Sorry about that, but I'll try to do it in order from now on. So let's scroll down a bit and let's come to heading for text size. This I want to make 20 pixels. And again, I'm not going to change it on, on any of the different screen sizes. I'm just going to leave it at 20 pixels. Then the lettering here looks a bit close to me. So I'm going to change this letter spacing to 0 0.5 pixels. So it just gives it a bit of spacing and makes it better to read. And then that's all for the text. And if we come back to the front end, we'll see it's got this underline. But this is actually a border. So let's come to the theme builder. And let's scroll down here yeah, until we get to the border section. And let's open that up. And we only want a bottom border. So I just want to show you. So this means there'll be a border around all sides. So let me just put five pixels there to show you. So you'll see that there's a, a border around all sides. But we don't want that. So let's just... Refresh that. We only want a border on the bottom. So that's for top, that's for right, that's for bottom, and that's for left. So let's choose a bottom border. Let's give this a width of three pixels. And let's make the bottom border color the white color. And there again is the hex code if you need it. And that's it for the heading over here. So let's save this by clicking the check mark again. And then what we can do, we can actually duplicate this. So we've got a bit of a problem here because you'll see our module, which is this gray box here, is sitting behind our row, which is the green box. So an easy way to get around this is to right click and select this option that says go to layer. And you'll then get this layers panel. It's like Photoshop if you've ever worked in Photoshop. So now we can at least get to the text module options here. So I want to duplicate this three times because you'll see here, we have another heading there and another heading there. So we need three headings. We've created the first heading, so let's just duplicate this twice. And what we can do, we can open the second column over here and just drag the module into the second column. Let's open the third column and drag the other text module into that column. And now all the styling is there and everything. All we have to do is change the text. So we can open the second text. And this said customer care. There's that one. And we can open the third text. And this one said page links. And I'm just going to leave this layers panel open because it, can, it gets easier to work. And you can just open everything you want. All the settings are over here. And you can just click which setting you want to go to without having to click this ch check button and then go and hover over it and get the next one. So I'm just going to leave this layers panel open. You can, if you want to, if you don't want to, you can close it. So there's all that set. So let's just save that. And then if we come over here, the next thing in this first column is we have this sentence here. So I'm going to just copy it here quickly. I'm going to come to, or well, we don't need to really do it there. If we hover over it, we can add a new module by clicking the gray button. So guys, just if this is your first time using Divi, the blue is the section, the green is the row, and inside the row you get columns, and then the gray, or this very dark gray, is the modules that you can put in. So we want to put in another module. If we hover over it, we can click this add button and our module section will pop up and we want another text section. So let's choose text. Let's select that. And then over here, I'm going to just paste my text in there. And then once it's pasted in, we can actually just come over here and hover over it and we can click this edit button and it will take us right to the text we want to edit. So for text font, I'm going to leave as default. For text font weight, I'm also going to leave as regular. I'm not going to change anything on the text font style. For the color, however, I wanted my light blue. So I'm going to select that and there's the hex code if you want it. Then for text size, I'm going to change this to 16 pixels. And I'm not going to set any different font sizes for the different screens. So I'm just going to leave it as 16 pixels on all screen sizes. 
and that's basically it for the text. Let's save that. And then we want to add another module. So if we come over here and we click on the gray add button to add a new module, we want to put in an email opt-in. So let's search for email opt-in. There it is there. Let's click on that. And guys, just maybe to forewarn you before we get into this, if you want to use this, you're going to need to sign up for a email autoresponder service. And I recommend a company called MailerLite. And I'll leave a link in the description to MailerLite. So before we carry on, I actually thought, let me just show you why I recommend MailerLite. So you get a free option here and you get all the features with the free option. So it's not like things like, I think it's GetResponse and Aweb and that, that you get free options, but they don't give you all the features. So MailerLite gives you all the features so you can do automations and things like that. And what's nice is also, I mean, it gives you 12 monthly emails you can send. It's only for one user, so only one user can sign up. But it has all the features, and, and that's what's quite cool about it. And then if you need to upgrade, you'll see the, the prices are extremely, extremely affordable. So sign up for MailerLite, and they don't accept things like affiliate marketing and that. So if you're selling make money online products and that. But if you're doing proper e-commerce, selling physical products and that, you shouldn't, you should be able to sign up without any, any issues at all. So I'll leave a link to this in the description, but you don't have to use MailerLite. Use a, another email autoresponder if you choose. It's up to you guys. I'm just recommending MailerLite because of the features it has. And as I said, you don't have to pay. Obviously, if you get to over a thousand subscribers, then you're going to need to go into a paid option. But if you've got a thousand subscribers, you should be making a bit of money and this should be quite affordable then. So go to MailerLite, link in the description and sign up if you want a autoresponder to collect client emails and to keep marketing to them. So I'm just going to close that, come back here and let's sort this form out. So if you can see here, yeah, we just have an email field with a button that says get 10% discount. So we don't need this title. Let's highlight that, delete that. You'll see it disappears. We don't need all this text, so we can delete that. In the footer, you'll notice here, I have this, we will never share your email address. So you can put that in there if you want. So I'm just gonna paste that in there. And then you need to come to this email account. And this is where you need to connect with the service provider you're gonna use. I'm using MailerLite, so if I click on the drop down, there's the MailerLite option. You can see that they connect with quite a few email autoresponder services. So there's a lot there that you can choose from. So I'm gonna choose MailerLite, and I'm gonna quickly connect mine, because if you don't connect with an email account, this form will not show up on the front. So you need to connect with your service provider in order for this form to show up on the front end. If you're not gonna use the form, or you're not going with the style I'm using here, then don't worry about this part. But if you, are, you want to use a form and collect emails, then connect with your service provider. So I'm just going to quickly do this off screen. So I've connected with my service provider, which is MailerLite, and I've chosen the list I want to send my subscribers to. One thing I forgot, guys, sorry, if we just come up back to this text, I forgot this button. Yeah, it says subscribe, but I want to change this to say get 10% discount. Always need to entice someone to give you their email address and what better way than to give someone a discount. Don't say something like sign up to my newsletter because no one's going to sign up to your newsletter. Give them something that entices them to, to give you their email address. Uh, email address nowadays is very, is very sacred. So yeah. So now that we've done that, let's come to the fields option and I only want the one field here, which is the email address. So show first name field, I'm going to say no. And show last name field, I'm going to say no. So I just want the email field. Then if we come to success action, we can display a mes message. And this is the default message, which says success. Or you can redirect to another page on your website. And you do that by selecting this option, redirect to a custom URL. I'm just going to display a message. I'm not really going to, yeah, you can also change the message. So you could say, thank you for subscribing. 
your 10% discount, you'll find your 10% discount in your in the email we send you. So it'll be something like that. Then spam protection. Again, you can connect to a spam protection service by clicking yes, and you can use recapture. And usually you sign up for an account there. I'm going to choose no because otherwise this video is going to get way too long. I'm setting all these services up. And then the link, we don't want to link the module to link to anywhere or anything like that. And then the background color, I don't want it this blue color, so I'm going to delete that. And you'll see it takes the blue color away. So let's just come to the design tab now. Let's come to layout. And I'm just going to leave the layout as is. All right, if we come to the fields option, again, I'm not going to change anything here. And guys, feel free to change and play around if you want to. I'm not really going to change anything here. If we scroll down further, come to text, I'm also just going to leave that as is. And then the title text, we don't have a title text. If you remember, we deleted that. But we do have this body texture, which is this footer here. So let's click into that. And all I really want to do is maybe make the text a bit smaller. So let's, I'm going to change that to 14 pixels. And then it's a bit smaller. And then I want to center it as well. So I'm going to come to body text alignment and center that. And then we get the result message text. I'm not going to change anything there, but again, feel free to experiment. And then just for the button, I do want to change the styling of that. So let's click on button and where it says use custom styles for button, let's select yes. So for button text size, I want to change this to 16 pixels. And the button text color, I want to change it to my dark blue so it matches the background color. And then for the button background color, I want to use my accent color, which is a light pink. And there is the hex code if you want it. And then I do want to give it a hover effect. So let's click on this cursor. Let's go to the hover state. And I'm going to leave it the pink color. All I'm going to do is change the opacity to 90%. So there's a, a slight change in color as someone hovers over it. Let's go back to the normal state. So button border width, I'm going to leave as four pixels. And then the button border color, I'm going to make white. And there's the hex code for white if you want it. The button border radius is fine at 20 pixels. And guys, if you remember, some of this we set up in the customizer right in the first video, I think it was. Button letter spacing, I do want some more spacing there. I'm going to make that one pixel. And you'll see it'll give it a bit, bit of spacing there. The button font, I'm going to leave as default. The button font weight, I want to make this a bit bolder. So let's try bold. And that looks better. And the button font style, it's already set to uppercase. Uh, we set that as well in the theme customizer. And then the show button icon, so it's this, this icon that appears here. It's got this little arrow here. I don't like the icons on buttons, so I'm going to take that off. So you'll see it's just that now. And then... We just want to set some padding on the button, yeah? So let's click this chain icon. And I just want more spacing at the top and bottom. So I want to make it 12 pixels for top and bottom. And gives it a... And it looks, a, it looks the same size as the email field as well. All right, and that's it. Then we can click the Save button. And there is our form. So let's see what we need to put in the second column. So yeah, we're going to put some links to some pages. And I can't remember how I mentioned this, but for instance, if these pages over here, I'm not going to do these pages in this video series. Um, once you've got a hang on the Divi Builder, you can create these pages yourself. I've just got these here to just fill up some content here. So what we need to do, let's go back to the Theme Builder. And let's come to the second column here. And let's add a new module. And we want a text module again. Let's open that up. And yeah, we're going to place our links. So the easiest way I find to do this, let's go back to our dashboard. So I'm going to come to the front end here. And I'm actually going to just hover over here, shop here. I'm just going to open dashboard in a new tab. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the pages page. <laughs> just so that I have all the pages here that I need. So let's come back to the theme builder. The first link I need is contact us. And I'm gonna push shift enter. So it goes to the next line. 
if I don't push it, shift enter, it gives quite a big space there. So to avoid that, we push shift enter and you'll see it just goes exactly to the next line. So the next one is delivery and returns. What I'm going to do, let me just quickly add all this and then I'll be with you now. So I've now added my five pages. So now we need to add links to these text items here. So to do that, if we come to the pages page we just opened, and the first one is contact us, she has our page. What we can do is the, we get an option to view the page, but we can right click on that and we can select this copy link address. You can come back to the theme builder and we can highlight contact us. And then over here in this panel, there's this chain icon. If we click on that, that gives us the option to insert a link. So we can paste our URL in there. And again, you can select to open in a new tab or not, and then click OK. And you'll see it now becomes a link because it's changed to this blue color. I'm going to quickly make these all links and I'll be back with you now. Right, so I've made these all links. You can see they're all links here. So let's click on this edit button for the links. Okay, for some reason it doesn't open up, but let's then click the text option. And first thing we want to do while it's on the text option, we want to center this text. So let's scroll down a little bit and click on center for text alignment. You'll see it moves it to the center. Then what we want to do, scroll back to the top here. So this is for text. And yeah, you'll see like a chain icon again. You want to click that for the link. And then for the link font, we're going to leave as default. Link font weight, we're going to leave as regular. Link font style, we're going to leave as is. We're not changing anything there. So link text alignment, you're going to ask, but there's the center option there. But for some reason, it doesn't center it when you choose a link option. So just make sure you center it on the normal text option. The link text color, we want it the same color as our text over here. So I'm going to choose that light blue. And again, there's a hex code if you need it. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this a hover effect. So let's click on this cursor icon. Let's come to the hover state. I'm going to change it to my accent color, which is this pink. And again, there's the hex code if you need it. So when someone hovers over that text, it's going to change to the accent color. I'm then going to go back to the normal state. All right, for text size, we made this one 16 pixels. So let's keep it uniform and make the links also 16 pixels. And that is all we're going to do for the links. So we can save that and what we can do, we can hover over this and duplicate that and we can drag this now to over under this. If it fits there, perfect. Because as you can see here, there's more links here for our page links. So I'm not going to run through this again. Um, you know how to do this now because you've done this side. All you're going to do is come into this. You're going to delete all this and you're going to name it like home, for instance. Our story. I'm just going to quickly name the other pages. And then what you're going to do again, highlight and just give them the links. So let me quickly do that. So I started just adding my links here and just so I want to show you, you'll notice because we set it up over here, when we add links now, yeah, it automatically gets the styling. So you don't have to go back and do any styling. But one thing I wanted to show you, here, this collections, it's actually the shop page. You'll see, I don't have a collections page and you'll see it's in alphabetical order. So the collections would be here by C, but it's my shop page. And if you want, you can change this and you do that by going to the quick edit option and you can change this to collections. And just change your slug as well so it all looks uniform and you can update that and there's a collection and you'll see it's still your shop page so you can change that if you don't want to call it shop i'm just going to copy the link address quickly put it in here you'll see now it's got the slug of collections and then this, if you following me exactly and you've got a, my account, again, if you go to pages, it's one of the pages that WooCommerce created right in the beginning when we installed the plugin. So it's over here, my account. And again, you can just copy that link address. Guys, sorry for any noise in the background. 
and there's all the links set. So I'm just going to close this. Let's save this and let's just look what it will look like on a tablet. So that's how it will look like on a tablet, which looks pretty good. And then on a phone, which is just a bit narrower. So that looks all pretty decent. So let's just see what else we need to do here. So we need to add our social media icons here. Let's go back to the theme builder. And now, because we've set three columns here, we actually need to add a new row because this is actually just one column. So let's click the green button now. That's remember, green is for our rows. Let's add a new row. And yeah, we only want a one column row. We then the module we want to search was called social media follow. So if you just type in social, it's this module. Yeah, let's select that. And we want the Facebook. We don't want Twitter, so let's go into Twitter and change this to Instagram. And then let's go back. And let's just duplicate Instagram and let's go into the settings of Instagram and select this one as Pinterest. And again, this is in alphabetical order. So guys, I'm not going to do this, but just to show you, when you do these social media icons, you need to come into this link option and put your link to your social media page. Otherwise, if you leave it as is and people come click this, they're not going to go anywhere. So just remember to put your account links under the link option. Yeah. One thing I want to do, I want to change the background to my accent color, which is a pink. So while you're in one of these social media icons, and in this case, it's Pinterest, come to the background. You'll see it's the red color, but I want it as the accent color. And again, there's the hex code. So now that we've done that, what we can do to change the rest of these colors, we don't have to go back, go into the next one. We can just come to the one we've changed. And if we come to background and we right click, we can extend the background style. So select that option. And where it says two, you want to search for social media follows. So you want to choose this option or social media follows and throughout. And we can choose this column because there's only one column. And we can click extend. And it changes all our background colors. So let's click on this back button. So I just want to show you, you'll also see background, Jane. You might say, but why did you have to do it individually on each social media network? Well, if I, let's choose this green color, it gives that whole module, because this is the entire length of the module. It gives the whole module the background color. So that's why we needed to do it individually. Okay. But now what we can do, if we go to the design tab, we you'll see uh, the actual icons are the same as the background color, which is blue. We can actually come, let's first deal with the alignment and let's center it. Then let's come to the icon. And yeah, we can actually change the icon color and it will change the color for all the icons. So let me choose my dark blue and you'll see changes all the icon colors. And guys, again, there's a hex code if you need it. Next thing we want to do, let's come to use custom icon size. Let's select yes. And I just want to change this to 18 pixels so it's a bit bigger. And that's all we're going to do. I just want to maybe show you, sorry, and maybe I should have done this. If you want to give this also a hover effect, I'm not going to do it. But again, just come into where the background color is. is. So you need to go to each social network, come to background. See if you hover over background, you can then click the cursor icon and you can give it the, maybe we must do that. Let's click on the cursor icon. Let's go to the hover state. Leave it as a pink, same as we did with these. Let's just make it a lighter pink. Maybe just opacity of 90%. Let's save that. Let's come to background. So you must choose a, this background, not the one in black, but the one in blue. Click extend background styles. Again, let's search for social. So let's extend this background styles to all social media followers throughout this column. And then extend. And then let's just go to Instagram and make sure it's given the hover effect. So it has it. So you actually need to go into it individually, click on it, and now it's given the hover effect. You just need to change it to all a hover state. So if we just click on the settings, you'll see it's given the RGBA of 90%. So let's go back and let's just go to the Pinterest one. And let's also just set the hover state there. And you'll see 
that's now also set there with the RGBA of 90%. So that's the social media. Let's see. I think there's one more thing we need to do, or two more things. So we need to add, this is an image. So guys, and I think I forgot to say this in the last video. These images, if you look in the description and you want to use the same images, maybe for your portfolio or something like that, if you're a freelancer, then you can actually download all the images I use by clicking the link in the description. And obviously, if you're creating a proper shop, use your own images with your own branding and that. But if you're just using this and copying me exactly for a maybe freelancer portfolio and that, you're more than welcome to use these images. So let's come back to the theme builder. We can save that now. We finished with that. Let's come over here and hover over these icons and just add a new module. And yeah, we just need an image module. So we don't want the Woo product images. We just want the normal image module. And then I'm going to click on this image and I'm just going to come to my other screen here and grab the image quickly. So there's the image. I'm going to click upload an image. And there's our images there. All we're going to do now is just come to the design tab, come to alignment and center that. And then the last thing we're going to do in this video, and guys, again, sorry that it's been such a long video, but this is the, the thing of building a website. It does take time. And that's why I've also broken these videos into different days just to make it easier to follow along. So do it as I do. Do day one and then take a break for that day. Don't, don't carry on unless you have plenty of time and you feel you're not going to get bored in that, then, then carry on watching the playlist. But if you, if you just want to do it a step at a time, just do day one, take a break for that day. The next day, do day two and so on. So all we want to do is add this here. So I just want to copy this quickly. Let's come to the theme builder. We can save our image and let's just add our last module for you. And we've got the problem where I can't again, get to the, add a new button. So I'm going to right click, go to layer. And here's our image module. I'm just going to click the add button. Yeah. And we just need the text module for this footer note. And we're going to use dynamic content here. And the reason being is we want this 2022 to change every year. And we have to do that dynamically. So instead of you having to come in every year to change this, I'm going to show you a very easy way that this updates automatically. So we're going to use dynamic content and we do that by clicking this icon and we're going to scroll and we're going to search for current date, which is over here. Let's select that option. And if we look here, so we need the copyright symbol. So in the before field, just type what I'm typing. It's the ampersand sign and then the word copy and then semicolon. And that will give you the copyright symbol. That's a, the HTML code for a copyright symbol. Then the next thing we need is when the company started. So in this case it was 2015. And then there's a dash for two. So just put in a dash. And that's all we're going to put in before because we want this year to change. So before this, we just need to put in this part here. And then this is going to be dynamic content. So let's go back to the theme builder. For after, I'm just going to paste the text I got, which is our website address, or it can be your shop name or your website name. And then I'm just going to scroll down here and date format. I'm going to come and click on the drop down and I'm going to choose custom. And then for custom, I'm going to put an uppercase Y. And that will give us the current year, as you can see there. Now you'll see that we need a space over there. And to do that space, all we need to do is to come to the after field. Just go to the very front of that text and just put a space there. You'll see we have our space now. So that's how you do that. And then you can click the save button. And then let's just come to the design tab. Let's click on text. Text font we're going to leave as default. Text font weight we're going to leave as regular. Text font style we're not going to change any styles. Text color 
we want our blue, our light blue color. There's the hex code if you need it. For text font size, I'm going to make this 12 pixels. Again, I'm not going to change it on any of the other devices. And then the last thing, we just need to center it. So we're going to come down to text alignment and click center. And guys, that is our footer done. We can click the save button. We can then close the footer layout by clicking the X. And guys, just remember, we need to, again, click this save changes button. Yeah, otherwise it won't take effect on the front end. So let's come to our website on the front end. So there's the header we did. Let's refresh the page. And now we have our footer done. And ladies and gents, we've come to the end of the video and I just want to thank you for watching the video right through. If you've gotten this far, it's been a long video. Thank you for watching the entire video. Then if I've gone too fast or maybe I've tried to explain something and I didn't explain it correctly, please drop a comment in the comment section. I will answer all the questions that are asked. If you don't want to use the comment section, my email address is also in the description so you can email me as well. And guys, maybe if you need a website built but you can't find the time to build it, or maybe you just feel it's too hard to build, get in touch with me and I can help you build the website. You'll find my URL link to my website below in the description, as well as an email address where you can contact me. If you do go through my website, there is a button where you can book a call. The call is absolutely free and we can discuss the project in more detail and see if we are right fit for one another. And then lastly, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. It helps my channel get out to more people, helps my videos to get out to more people as well. And then if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing as well, especially if you're following along with this video series. And then hit the notification bell and you'll be notified every time I release a video, especially on this series. And you can then keep following along with the series. So guys, until next time, have a good one. Cheers.